in my experience, just working with companies that are ESOPs or are considering ESOPs, it does require a tremendous amount of energy to make the transition successfully. Where do you think people need to focus or where did you focus as you were your energy as you're making that transition so that your employees would begin to understand the benefits of the ESOP and begin to get excited about it. It's a slow process, but to me, the, the number one thing is transparency. Hmm. And so we set up set up a meeting for all our employees on a Saturday. We we decided we described what was going to happen. They all came in and we had three different presentations. Our CFO did a presentation on what it was, mechanically how it worked. I did a presentation on why we were doing it. And then we had another panel discussion with I think it was five employees from Emory Sapp and Sons that they sent over to our folks so that they could ask, what about an ESOP? How does this work? And so that was a very important aspect of our people buying into it. Okay, so that's really, that's really wise, it sounds like. So you get the CFO up, you get up, and then you have the folks from that mentor company, so to speak, come in and provide their feedback. Right. We had done the math and we said, you know, if if everything goes right this year, just so you know, if everything goes right, your value in the ESOP, your, the average employee will be $147. $147. And, bucks. Yeah. And we got a lot of grimaces, especially from a couple of wives that were in the room that were like, we took a Saturday off to come hear this. And understandably so. But if I can get into a little bit of the details of it, the minutia, yeah, it's please. kind of like the best way I can, the best analogy I can provide. It's like, let's say you and your brother, if you had a brother, yep. are working for me and I own a $1 million apartment complex. Uh -huh. And you guys are working for me. And I say to you, Okay, I'm putting this company in an ESOP and it's worth a million dollars. I'm going to hold a note for a million dollars. You're going to pay me off over time. So the first day, your equity in, the, in that transaction is zero. Mm -hmm. You're nearly zero, right? You haven't paid me back anything. Yeah. So the two ways you can build equity are to pay me back and to increase the value of that, that you can do things to raise the rent. You can work hard. So there is very, very little value up front the way our ESOP was, trend, was structured because I took 100% note. The company owed me 100% of the purchase price and I had a 20-year balloon payment. So the, the, it, it builds slowly, but it does build over time. So the initial years are as they as we all work to increase the value of the company, and that's where the equity comes from. And then following when they start paying down promissory note, you build equity like that, just like you do in a house or a car or anything else. Okay, so that it's important for them to understand because they may be, when you explain the ESOP to them, to any employee, they may be overwhelmed by the amount because they're thinking, where am I gonna get that money from? And right. so it's important for them to understand the logic of as you increase the value of the company, that's how the note gets paid off Correct. and that's how they begin to build equity in the in the business correct because we did get the question like can i invest can i buy stock in the company well you cannot i suppose there are some esop structures where you could but in ours you could not so it was just as as we continue to build the business that's where the value comes from so nobody could put any money in nobody did put any money in this is literally value that comes out of thin air when okay. you set up the esop